Astronomer Robert Williams intended to direct the Hubble Space Telescope towards an unremarkable area of the sky for 100 hours in 1995. His co-workers rebuked him because they believed it was a bad idea and a waste of the telescope's valuable observing time. But as the director of the Space Telescope Science Institute, the criticism didn't matter because he had access to 10% of the observing time. With it, anything was possible. Williams stated that he would resign from the position if nothing noteworthy came out of it. Therefore, between December 18 and December 28, Hubble fixed his attention on a section of sky close to the handle of the Big Dipper that was only a little over 1 30th as wide as the full moon. 342 images of the area were captured by the telescope, with each exposure lasting between 25 and 45 minutes. It turns out that the area of the sky that appeared to be vacant was actually teeming with galaxies. Over 3,000 emerged, some of which were almost 12 billion years old. Images of galaxies of all shapes and sizes, including spiral, elliptical, lenticular, red, blue, orange, and yellow galaxies, revealed the universe in ways that scientists could never have predicted. This merged image is currently referred to as Hubble Deep Field. Astronomers desired more data despite Hubble Deep Field's impressiveness. The $10 billion James Webb Space Telescope ultimately gave that opportunity almost three decades later. By the middle of 2022, Cycle 1, Webb's long-awaited first year of scientific observations, had begun. Two of its Cycle 1 projects stared at different little patches of the sky for dozens of hours, searching for far-off galaxies in the early universe. Astronomers did not anticipate anything extraordinary. They anticipated that these two short-period Cycle 1 projects would provide them with an improved version of the Hubble Deep Field. Instead, to their surprise, such galaxies suddenly appeared in their field of vision. Galaxies that must have existed in the first 200 million years after the Big Bang have just been discovered by astronomers. The abrupt opening of Webb's windows to the last significant undiscovered period in the history of the universe excited the scientists. But those galaxies were not at all what we had anticipated. They were instead incredibly luminous and had stellar masses that were billions of solar masses. These enormous developed galaxies defy the predictions of our accepted theory of the development of the universe. Where then did our models go wrong? How can the James Webb Space Telescope's latest extragalactic sightings be explained? Do these findings indicate that the Big Bang theory is false, which is the final and most crucial question? Let's go back to the time when it was thought that the universe first originated in order to solve the puzzle. All four of the known fundamental forces had already separated from one another in the first second following the Great Bang. The initial particles that make up the universe were extremely hot and dense. Helium and other extremely light element nuclei started to develop during the course of the following three minutes as the cosmos expanded and cooled. In 400,000 years, the universe will have become sufficiently cold for atoms to form. About 150 million years later, the first stars were formed, bringing an end to the Dark Ages. These enormous stars, known as Population the Three Stars, were primarily hydrogen and helium-based, lacking heavier components seen in current stars. They created the first proto-galaxies, or the gas clusters, that clung to massive, invisible structures made of dark matter. These proto-galaxies were brought together by gravity to create massive galaxies. It is estimated that this complicated process took a billion years to complete. Webb's observations, however, cast doubt on the entire paradigm. Numerous of these tiny protogalactic shards that haven't yet joined to form a massive galaxy, according to astronomers, should be visible. They are observing a few objects, though, that are already massive galaxies. One of them, with a redshift of 13.1, is GLZ-13. In astronomy, redshift is represented by the dimensionless number Z, where Z0 represents the present. Additionally, as its importance grows for distant things, so do its distance and our look-back period. It's a big deal to identify galaxies above a redshift of 11, yet Hubble could only find one in its 30 years of searching. Webb, on the other hand, is an infrared observatory, so it can easily look into areas of the universe that even the Hubble couldn't. The redshift of GLZ-13 indicates that it was created 300 million years ago. The first redshift measurements were photometric, 
which means they were made by looking at the galaxy through various colored filters without performing a spectroscopic analysis. Astronomers hypothesized that there might be a problem with the redshift value because the photometric redshift isn't very accurate. The Atacama Large Millimeter Array, or ALMA, in Chile, suggested that's not the case with this candidate, though, in their follow-up observations. The redshift is indeed about 13. Furthermore, GLZ-13 has a mass of a billion solar masses, which defies our theories about how stars develop. This is due to the fact that you would not be able to get that huge so quickly even if you took everything that was available to form stars. And why can't we observe star formation in contemporary galaxies if it was really occurring so swiftly and effectively? The Lambda CDM model, which is our standard model of cosmology, has difficulty explaining these data. In this context, CDM stands for cold dark matter and Lambda for dark energy. Astronomers are currently working tirelessly to integrate Webb's data into the many cosmological theories. The Lambda CDM hypothesis, for instance, suggests that high-mass star formation may have been quite effective in the early universe. This is due to the high temperature and gas pressure, which have a significant impact on star formation. Perhaps even magnetic fields played a crucial role in moving matter to spark the creation of stars sooner than we previously believed. Another straightforward explanation is that early universe galaxies might have had little to no dust, which would have made them appear brighter. The disputable concept of modified Newtonian dynamics, or MOND, may also be supported by the Webb observations. According to the MOND hypothesis, which was put forth in 1983, dark matter does not exist, and its effects can be explained by significant variations in gravity. Webb's early observations are consistent with the concept that many phenomena can be explained by MOND rather than the Lambda CDM model. The Big Bang theory isn't incorrect even if the James Webb Space Telescope has discovered dozens of galaxies that don't match our cosmological models. This is due to the fact that it has been supported by a large body of observational evidence over the past century that cannot be ignored. For instance, the Big Bang makes precise predictions about the amount of each element that was created in the early universe. The abundance of each chemical element that astronomers observe in very old galaxies and stars supports the Big Bang theory. The redshift of far-off galaxies also fits the Big Bang theory. By the time it reaches us, the light from galaxies has been distorted. It appears redder than it ought to. The redshift seen is due to galaxies relocating away from our galaxy. Observations indicate that the majority of the universe is expanding apart. Galaxies would be moving toward one another if time could be turned back. Everything in the universe would have been located in one location if you could travel back in time far enough, as predicted by the Big Bang Theory. The cosmic microwave background, which was first postulated in 1948 and discovered in 1965 as support for the Big Bang Theory, is possibly the strongest piece of evidence. The initial Webb extragalactic programs have demonstrated the need for adjustments to our star formation and galaxy development models. The planned Cosmos Webb program, which will observe a larger portion of the sky for hundreds of hours, is anticipated to significantly expand the population of early galaxies. Astronomers anticipate discovering thousands of such galaxies which will improve our database and allow us to create precise models. According to some calculations, Webb might observe objects 120 million years after the Big Bang with a redshift of 26. If accurate, it would be a significant development in astronomy. That concludes the video. In order to ensure that you don't miss any upcoming updates, please give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and most importantly, click the bell symbol. Thank you for watching. Until next time, take care.